Death in the TF2 universe is a weird thing. You see, what happens to you when you die in the TF2 universe seems on the surface to be completely illogical and random. Some of our characters claim there is nothing on the other side, yet when they die they come back as ghosts who can be sent to hell. Some of our hired killers go to heaven, and then one of them just goes directly to hell. And then some just... die. D that's it, they just die. Now I've been a big fan of the comics for as long as I've been playing TF2, and the question of how does death and or the afterlife work in the TF2 universe is one that I've always had and never had the answer to. So, greatly inspired by the news that we would at some point in the future be getting another comic, I decided to go back and reread every instance of every time that one of our major characters has died in the comics, and see if I could definitively answer my question of what happens to you when you die in the TF2 universe. And I actually think I have an answer, although it might be a bit of a stretch. And in order to keep the pacing of this video consistent, I'm actually going to tell you what I think that answer is right now, and then use that to explain my points as we go along. So, here we go. What happens to you when you die in the TF2 universe? Well, I think what happens to you is what you'll expect to happen to you. I think you see what you'll expect to see. And whether things stay that way forever is entirely dependent on whether you think they will. Now that might sound incredibly dumb, but allow me to explain. And by explain, I mean let's cover the four major instances of death in the comics, and I'll show you how the circumstances of these deaths led to my answer. So starting in chronological order, we have to talk about the Man Brothers first. So in the comic Blood Brothers, we see both of our Man Brothers meeting up to discuss a potential truce over the gravel walls, only to realise a few moments later that they were tricked into discussing a truce by their older brother Grey Man so he could lure them to one place together and kill them both. And then an entire year later, we would get treated to the comic Grave Matters, where we see both Man Brothers came back as ghosts after being killed. Ghosts which then try to send each other to hell. Hmm, okay. Now this first comic is pretty self-explanatory. Both of the Man Brothers thought that the other one had sent an invitation of a truce so that they could meet up and potentially discuss things. And it seems they were both willing to discuss a potential truce. It was only then, in the second comic, when the idea of potentially outliving each other was back on the table that they began to fight over their land again. And it seems that they were both left in a very unique state to do so, because after they went to Soldier to consult him for legal advice, he told them that neither of them are technically dead, as ghosts are between worlds. So we have two brothers locked in an endless battle against each other, only to meet and form a truce, to then find out that the truce was faked, to then die, to then come back as ghosts, and then to continue fighting against each other. So would it not be too much of a stretch to suggest that both brothers thought they would be fighting this war indefinitely? I mean, this is even backed up slightly by the Loose Cannon comic, in which Blue Tuck Man says he has been fighting this war indefinitely and how his brother just won't die. So as I said earlier, I don't think it's too crazy to assume that both of the Man Brothers thought they would be fighting this war for an eternity. And how did that manifest when they died? Well, they came back and they continued to fight each other. Now, I feel I should say before things continue that a lot of my theories here aren't necessarily 100% watertight, because they are just that, theories. What I'm trying to do is take pieces from the TF2 lore that do not make sense and fit them in an order in which they might make sense. But nothing's going to be 100%. But I actually think this is one of the more convincing ones on this list. It just makes a lot of sense to me. If both of the Man Brothers thought they would be fighting this war for eternity, then they would continue to fight this war for eternity even after death. Now there are some other things I have to say about the Loose Cannon comic, but we'll touch upon that at the end of the video. But for now, that's the Man Brothers completed. The next of our main characters to die is Sniper in the comic Blood in the Water. At the very end of the comic, our Sniper is shot dead by the TF Classic Sniper, and is then later revived in the comic Old Wounds. However, before he is revived in Old Wounds, we get to see a glimpse of how his afterlife manifests. We get to see him in heaven, dressed in white robes, talking to his previously deceased parents. Now this scene always struck me as odd, as Sniper's parents are notoriously, in fact, against his job as an assassin. Yet in this panel, we see him talking to his parents, and they seem happy at what he's become. And then they tell him he needs to go back to Earth to finish the job. And this is just completely out of character from what we've previously seen. Now how on earth am I going to link this back to my theory? Well, as I said earlier, Sniper's parents have previously died in the earlier comic. 
So if Sniper himself were to die, would it not make sense that he'd at least think he'd see his parents? Now as for the conversation they have, I've got nothing. Like I said, this is not a watertight theory. I'm not going to claim that these aren't his parents and that this is just some figment of his imagination because that just seems like a bit of a stretch. But I think if Sniper were to die, I think he would see his parents again and I think he would probably want to make amends with them. And it seems that they have the same attitude as well. No one really wants to leave each other on bad terms, not even Australians. So if Sniper's parents were to see him again, I suspect he'd think that they'd want to make amends with him and then everything would be hunky-dory in the end. Now I will admit that those two examples maybe aren't the strongest ones in the entire lineup. In fact, there is even some evidence to suggest otherwise against them. But throw all of that away because I genuinely believe I'm on the money with these next two. So the next two mercs both die in the comic The Naked and the Dead, and the first of which is Scout. Scout was battling some robots but was gravely injured and eventually ends up perishing in Spy's arms, only to instantly be taken to heaven and be told by God that he was his gift to man. Hmm, yeah this was always a weird one. God then presents himself to Scout as his biggest fan and then promptly sends him back to Earth so he can continue to do what he does. Now you don't need me to tell you that Scout thinks very highly of himself. He thinks he's the greatest womanizer the world has ever seen, a marvel of a human specimen, and the biggest man on campus. But in reality, we all know that he is none of these things. But he really does believe he is God's gift to man. And so, if he were to die in a world where what happens to you after you die is subconsciously up to you, well, it would only make sense that he'd have these things proven to him. It would make sense that God would tell him that he made Scout in his image. And it would even make sense that he sends him back to Earth just so he can continue to do what he does. There is literally no other explanation for why Scout would see the things he did when he died. And we know that he did die, it wasn't just a hallucination. The only, only other reasoning I could have thought of for God saying all of these things to Scout is that maybe he doesn't want to hurt his feelings, but... You know, that seems dumb. And finally, we bring ourselves to Medic. So in the comic Naked and the Dead, Medic is killed by the TF Classic Heavy. He was then pretty promptly sent to hell and explains to the devil that yes, he did sell his soul to him, however, he has also stolen all of the souls of all of the other mercs, and therefore the devil has no legal tender over him and is forced to send him back to Earth. Now this one is just all kinds of weird, but it's also really funny and it does actually confirm that none of the other mercs have souls which I don't really know how that affects this theory, but we're going to ignore it for now. Anyway, there's a lot to unpack here, so let's begin. First off, Medic has sold his soul to the devil in exchange for... Well, I don't actually know if we learnt what it was for. I would like to assume it's exotic animal parts, because he seems to be very obsessed with those, but I have no evidence proving this. But anyway, Medic was familiar with the whole process before. So he has either died before and spoken to the devil, or conducted a seance and spoken to the devil before, which is just really funny. Now the most interesting part of all of this is that Medic had stolen all of the souls of our other mercs. This to me sounds like something you would do in preparation for bargaining with the devil. He specifically sold his soul, which makes me think he collected all of the souls of our mercs afterwards in preparation for going to hell, which he knew he would be going to. When one sells their soul, they have condemned themselves to hell at the end of their flesh, and therefore Medic 100% knew he would be going to hell. And that pretty much just explains my theory for me. Medic fully well knew he was going to be going to hell at the end of his time and therefore prepared for it. He expected to go to hell, and he did. And rather uneventfully, that's the end of my theory. That is all of the evidence I have to suggest that how the afterlife in the TFT universe works is entirely up to your subconscious. Whatever you expect to happen to you at the end of your time is what will happen to you. Is this theory 100% watertight? No, not in the slightest. In fact, I have made adequate note throughout the video to remind you of that. Is this theory currently the best theory to explain all of the spaghetti littering the comics about death? Yes, I think so. And until someone else proposes another one, this is what I'm going to be banking my ideas on when the seventh comic comes out. I'm very tempted to make a seventh comic predictions video, so if you have any predictions on the matter, please be sure to comment them down below. But I wanted to present to you this theory to kind of type a few loose ends for how things work in the comics. The final two mercs we covered, I'm actually pretty certain on my theory on. However, the first two did have some issues and actively had some pages in other comics or even the same ones contradicting what I said. But with that in mind, here are the pieces I've put together of the puzzle, so let me know down below if you can fill in any others for me. And with that, one final thank you for watching, and I will see you later down the sunny road. Something.